Every year at Telstar Middle School, we hold the Art Reach event where we use our artwork to help our community. This year, TMS Fine Art students decided to help fight animal abuse and cruelty. We chose to help this cause locally by raising money for the Harvest Hills Animal Shelter in Freiburg, Maine. This was the only shelter in our area that is a non-profit, no-kill, and serves both cats and dogs. A group of 8th grade students visited Harvest Hills to learn more about the shelter and what we can do to help them. We interviewed the manager of the shelter, Jim Brown. The shelter, this building that we're in right now, started 15 years ago. It used to be next door for about 30 years, which is our, now our thrift store. And a woman named Jean Edwards started that with uh, very limited funds. She had fundraisers to get monies to help feed the animals that she had. She donated this piece of property that the shelter's on right now to us, and then we were later able to buy the old farmhouse, which is the thrift, and the 20 acres that surrounds it. We belong to uh, the Humane Societies of America, Harvest Hills does, and most of the shelters in Maine belong to that organization. So we're all working together. We can do 31 dogs here, and, but a lot of other shelters around can only do about 15. And when we have space, we just call around to other shelters in the area to see if they need help. We average about 500, maybe 520 cats, and between 450 and 500 dogs in a year's time. So roughly a thousand animals come through the door in a year's time. People that want to adopt a cat or dog, they have to fill out a four page application that we have. Um, if it's approved, cats and kittens are $80 and that includes them being spayed or neutered and they have their rabies vaccination, distemper and their combo tested. We test everybody for leukemia and feline AIDS. Dogs um, are 125, they have their rabies, distemper, kennel cough vaccination and they're spayed or neutered. There is really no profits made off of that because it's consumed in vet bills. We have a very small spay and neuter clinic that is run in our basement down here that we do once a month for cats only. Uh, we can do nine, we can do nine male neuters and three female spays, which helps out because overpopulation is the biggest problem right now on cats. Our, I mean, our vet care we have here is not free. We get a little bit of a discount, but it's not free. We don't get free medical care for these animals here. And it costs us between $25 and $3,000 a month. So that's a lot of, you know, fundraising. That's a lot of writing to try to get monies coming in. That's a lot of pleading to people um, to please help. And a lot of times we're very lucky. We have a limited budget. We're a small shelter in Maine. Um, funded by our community which is extremely generous to us in fundraising and, it, and it's very hard as a nonprofit organization and that's always an obstacle. We also interviewed an animal control officer who works closely with Harvest Hills. Bobby Seelcott explained more about the government structure responsible for animal welfare in Maine. Well in the state of Maine the Department of Agriculture runs the Animal Welfare Department, which Animal Control falls under. And between Animal Welfare and the state legislature, they create and write laws to protect the animals and make sure that they give them safeguards. Well, as an Animal Control Officer, my main job is uh, to assure that animals are, are protected um, and receive appropriate medical treatment. The, the old days of the dog catcher are long gone. This is a regulated business now and you have to be certified to do it. If this is an average day today, I had to do a bite report in quarantine for a dog that bit another dog. And uh, I also had to bring two stray dogs here to Harvest Hills Animal Shelter that I believe were abandoned. And um, then I've made a little time to come and talk with you folks. So. It varies widely. First thing in the morning, we're here between 7 and 7.30, and we have to feed and clean all the cats and dogs, um, which includes all their laundry. They all have towels and blankets and dishes, and their cages need to be cleaned and disinfected every single day. Um, while they're here, we try to treat them as best as we possibly can. We have really good staff, people working here, incredible volunteers. 
uh, which help us clean in the mornings like we were talking about earlier. They help us um, socialize cats and dogs, dog walking and things of that nature. I think while they're here they do pretty well and they're well taken care of um, socially and medically. We asked Mr. Silcott to tell us about the biggest obstacles that he faces in his work to protect animals. Education probably is, is one of the biggest obstacles. It's just getting the word out so people understand what the responsibility is. Spaying, neutering animals, making sure the animals are, uh, have proper identification on them so if they're lost that they can return to the owners as fast as possible. Um, abuse, neglect. We asked that same question of Mr. Brown. Funding. Food, um, we do get incredibly low on food, but luckily, last ditch efforts, people do always pull through for us, but sometimes it gets kind of scary. You know, you get down to a certain amount of cleaning materials and stuff like that. To help us with the obstacles like that would be fundraisers. There's a lot of um, kids that have fabulous ideas of stuff that we wouldn't ordinarily think about. And it's all on how you socialize your animals, cats or dogs for that matter. And if you socialize your pets and show them attention, feed and water them, I mean you get back ten times more than you'll put in. And just spreading the word to people to take care of their pets as though they were their kids is the, you know, the main thing. And it's just like word of mouth. I do it through the school, we preach it here at the shelter, and you guys can do that the same with your friends and at school. We do have people that come in once a month for like an hour, and it's not like, we don't have like a standard form to go by that, okay, you're a volunteer, you need to be here 10 hours a week. It's nothing like that. We have people that come in once a month because that's all they can do, and sometimes it's only for an hour, it could be for a half a day, it's perfectly fine. During our visit to Harvest Hills, we also got to meet and play with a lot of the animals living in the shelter. It is hard to imagine how anyone could abuse and neglect such beautiful and loving creatures. We get dogs in from time to time from animal control um, that are emaciated to where you can see hip bones and count every single rib they have and they can barely stand up because they have no muscle. Their body is basically eating their muscle to survive. Um, and that takes a lot of, you know, time, a lot of money to help these animals survive that because, I mean, there's really no need of that ever happening to anybody. We get cats in here in the winter that have frostbite. We've got a cat named Bruce upstairs right now that's missing the top of one of his ears because it was frostbitten. We've had cats that had one paw frozen in water before that we ended up naming Ice Princess. Um, when she came in, but she was missing like her front leg because that had to come off because of frostbite. Red has been here for a year and a half. And people weren't really into a one-eyed cat, so we decided that she lives here. So she runs loose with the other ones, but if somebody wanted to adopt her, I say, here you go, because she's already gained seven pounds since she's been loose. So. <laughs> we have two dogs upstairs right now, um, Sativa and Destiny. The mother is nine, Sativa is seven. Their owner is in assisted living because he had dementia. Nobody in the family would take the two dogs and they've been here for almost seven months. And it's just like family members sometimes don't step up. We are a no-kill here. The cats and dogs live here until they find a home. And the only times that we've had to euthanize here is severe aggression and, or illness and our vet says that it's more humane for this to happen. It's a heartbreaking decision. Well, what you're doing right now through this fundraiser is tremendous. This, is, this money will have an impact on exactly that. This money will go to animals that are brought in here that are abused, neglected, and uh, will help them medically, help them get cleaned up, whatever it may take. We're all here for the animals, for the well-being of the animals and to take care of them and to show them that you know, abuse is in a way of life. We are hoping to raise as much money as possible to help the Harvest Hills Animal Shelter as they try to find loving homes for the many animals that they protect. Please open your hearts to consider making donations to this worthy cause.